Hi, everybody. Welcome to Grow, Heal, and Change. I'm Patricia, and I have a really unique guest here today. With me is Clive Shuttler. He's an herbalist and nutritionist, and he specializes in cannabis and psychedelics. Hi, Clive. Thanks for being here. Hi, Patty. Wonderful to be on your <laughs> channel. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple of questions because I think a lot of people have confusion around this. Right. Why should cannabis stop being referred to in the old, I'll call it old school terminology of stimulating sativas and sedating indicas? Well, the plant has basically moved on since those terms were introduced. And there's so much breeding going on that to find a pure indica or pure sativa is basically impossible. So what you do find today is mostly a hybrid and then you get the dominant hybrids, which will be a indica dominant hybrid or a sativa dominant hybrid. And the reason that is no longer really applicable because it's not really the sativa that does the work, it's the, the terpenes that each plant is uh, filled with. I mean, there's, there's, there's this huge amount of terpenes and each one has a very different effect on the body. So, People need to move away from that because it's actually confusing in the context of treatment. So if you have a sativa that's very stimulating, you can also have an indica that's very stimulating because the terpenes are similar and because of the cross breeding. So it's a very uh, irrelevant term actually. And people need to understand that it's no longer applicable in the, in the marketplace. It's just so overwhelmed by hybrids that you, to find a pure, pure, Indica, you'd have to go into the mountains of, you know, of Afghanistan or Pakistan, yeah. you know, and there you might find something that's still pure, but there's just so much crossbreeding, cr cross pollination as well, because of the huge amount of hemp that's being grown. So the pollen is always flowing all over the world. So you can never say that's a pure indica any longer. That's unfortunate. Well, that's cool. That's interesting. Mm. Um, for people who don't know, what is a terpene? Because a lot of people don't even go that deep into this. Right. Well, the terpene is, is like turpentine. You know, terpenes are your essential oils, essential aromas and fragrances within the plant. Um, if you look at lemons, the, the dominant terpene is limonene. So you find a lot of limonene within sativas. But you also now obviously find a lot of indicas with limonene in it. So the, the terpene is really what causes the effects within the body and how it's linked to the THC or the CBD or the CBDV or the THCV, how are they linked together within the, the, the structure of the, the plant. Okay, cool. So what are the dominant terpenes? If you can well, you've got that. six major terpenes within cannabis and they do appear within other plants. It's not just unique to cannabis. So your number one sort of majority you'll find dominant in most plants is myrcene. It's M-Y-R-C-E-N-E, -E, myrcene. Um, then you have caraphylene, which is a uh, second most dominant, but that's sort of equal uh, to limonene. Um, limonene is a very common terpene, so that's why you have to be quite careful with it. It can have a, a detrimental effect on some people. It's really stimulating. And then you have linalool, and uh, panine. Was it and linalool? Can you spell it for me? L-I-N-A-L-O-O-L. Linalool. L -I -N -A -L -O -O -L. linalool. Okay. Now, linalool is, 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 is the same uh, aroma and effect as lavender. So it's very calming. It's a very, very sedating type of terpene. Very calming. So that, that's sort of what you would need to be dominant for a plant that you'd want to use for sleep or for calming, or for anxiety. And then you have uh, pinene and uh, humulene. Pinene is obviously uh, like pine. It's a very sweet, aromatic, stimulating terpene. Yeah, I love the smell of pine. <laughs> mm. So what other plants also have terpenes? Because it's not uh, just cannabis. No, what you will find, like with the myrcene, uh, you'll find cloves have a lot of mercy in it. Okay. And carophylline is pepper. You'll find a lot of uh, carophylline in pepper, black pepper cloves, uh, um, the black pepper 
you grind it up that smell that you get of the black peppers carefully. Um, limonene, obviously, is all the citruses. All your citrus has limonene, so lemons and limes and grapefruits and oranges and navels and all those kind of things. Um, like I said, linalool is lavender, mostly lavender. You don't really find it in anything else. And uh, the panine is from pine. And the humulin is a woody smell, uh, whether you find it in other... Uh, I haven't really found any other plants that have a lot of uh, humulin. It's very really unique to cannabis. I'm going to say this name wrong, I'm sure, but it's linalool. Mm -hmm. Linalool. And, linalool. and that's yeah. only found in lavender, which is... Yeah, is a sedating kind of very sedating thing. and calming, and yeah, specifically for anxiety and sleep insomnia. Oh, interesting, very cool. Mm. Um, what are the effects that these things have on the user? Look, the, the nursing is mostly um, very relaxing and calming. Mercy. Uh, okay. Yeah, the mercy. It's, it's very good for pain relief as well. Very good on um, nerve pain and bone pain. Um, Carifeline, I want to finish with mercy. Mercy has a lot of anti inflammatory properties and it has a lot of antifungal and antibacterial properties. Okay. So you can use it for um, if you've made an oil or infused an oil, if you have problems with bacteria on sores and stuff, you could apply it on that as well, if it's a very high mercine plant. So it has antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, Carifeline is also anti-inflammatory, but it's very good for insomnia, uh, pain, spasms, and, and a good antioxidant. Um, limonene is an antidepressive, antidepressant. It's very good for ADD and ADHD. Good for breast cancer specifically, the limonene. It's, it's attaches to breast cancer cells quite aggressively. It's very interesting, and they're doing a lot of research on that at the moment. Oh, that's cool. Linalool, linalool is obviously, like I've said earlier, it's very good for stress, anxiety. Um, it's good for convulsions too, but you can also cause convulsions and seizures if you're not careful with how you're applying. And so you have to be careful with that. You can't just say that specific terpene will stop convulsions. It might also trigger convulsions. So you have to be yeah. careful with that. And which uh, terpene was that with the convulsions? Linalool. 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 Okay, yeah. so that was sedating, but it can also suppress convulsions, but it can also maybe well, you've taken too too much of it, it can it, cause yeah. Them. Yeah, look, anything can cause a convulsion. You know, anything. It's just, people just think, you know, because it says anticonvulsant, that's that's what it's gonna stop. But you never know. It could just be something they ate, and then when they do a combination of that what's going on in the body, it could trigger. It, I mean, the convulsions are very difficult to pin down, but it yeah. does help. It does make a big difference to convulsions. Um, the pinene is very stimulating. It's very good for memory and very good for alertness, which on the other side is not a good thing on some, which we'll get to just now. And then uh, humulene, interestingly enough, is an appetite suppressant, where a lot of the other... Um, strains can give you the munchies. I'm sure you've heard about getting the munchies when people have been yes, using I cannabis. Have. <laughs> yeah. Specifically, yeah. you know, for, for generating appetite if they're going through chemotherapy, you know, if they've got a lot of nausea and stuff. So some plants are very good for that. But if you didn't yeah. get a humulene dominant terpene within a plant that can actually suppress appetite, so you need to be careful with that too. But some people, uh, specifically in like the special needs community, those children, on a very bad diet anyway. The nutrition is really bad because they won't eat what's good for them and they will have such a huge uh, aggressive outburst if you try and force them to eat stuff that they don't like. So they just stick to eating like chicken nuggets and you know French fries. Yeah, I know and stuff, a lot of people really tell me they stick to like the same four or five foods. Yeah, they yeah, they, they can't beyond that. That's right. They don't really, you know, have a very broad, varied diet. So then they already start putting on a lot of weight because they're eating junk and they're not, they don't exercise. They're not people that are, you know, active, really. They're not really, you know, running every day or on a bicycle. Most of them are, you know, stuck at home. So they do put on a lot of weight and a lot of the medication also causes them to put on weight. And then if you introduce a strain, which might be very um, effective in reducing the anxiety and aggression, it can then also give them the raging munchies. So 
you end up with a bigger problem because the child is then becoming aggression, uh, very aggressive because they're getting hungry all the right. time. So you've sort of angry. calmed them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You calm them in one way with the, like, say, the Luna Law is very good and whatever, and they calm down and they're no longer aggressive. But then they start having rages because they, you don't want to give them more food because they've just eaten. So that's when you'd look for a plant that could be high in limaline, but uh, humaline. But also what you can do is then do combinations. So you could make so, a blend. Well, yeah, it sounds like you need special blends for each individual case, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah. my question is, humaline, what um, foods would that be found in? I haven't found it in any other thing major, like I said earlier. Okay. It's the, the only references that, that would, you be, that would be just too easy because then everybody would be like, oh, I'm going to start eating yeah. that so I can yeah. not yeah. put on weight yeah. or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure there must be, you know, the, the, the terpenes is a very new field of research. I mean, obviously people know about them, but they've never really, really put them together, you know, and, and the way cannabis functions within the body and the endocannabinoid system. I mean, it, we could go really deep down this rabbit hole of the terpenes and what they do and how they work and where to find them. But it's still a very new field of research. So I'm sure there is, there must be something else out there that's got humulene in it, you know, because it's, yeah. that's nature. I mean, nature doesn't really pick one thing over the other sort of, you it know. It doesn't make mistakes generally. either. So yeah, I'm sure no, we can find it no. in the future. Yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. It's just, you know, sometimes a lot of the families that I've been dealing with have had big issues with raging munchies and then the child goes into a really bad space because they think you're being nasty to them. They don't, you must know a lot of them can't uh, communicate properly. They're nonverbal, most of them. And the only way they can express themselves is by smashing something or throwing something or hitting their parents or something because they're now not getting a, another packet of Mac Nuggets, you know, and it's yeah. really just down to that, you know. So. Yeah, it's very it's interesting. Really, it's really um, a difficult uh, situation to navigate for the families as well. So, yeah, yeah. And and like I said before, it really has to be individualized for each uh, each child. Exactly that, and that's also one of the sort of main fields I've been focusing on is is, is breeding the plants, crossing plants that are very high in certain terpenes, and selecting the best results from them. So that you get a very good terpene profile. You know, you, you, a lot of these oils and stuff that you can buy online, they don't have even a certain, there's no lab testing at all. So they it was like shot in the dark. They just go and buy whatever they think is a high THC or a high CBD. And because right. the terpenes don't match, they have a really terrible experience there because the child thinks, you know, well, they, they think that it's going to work and then they go and give them this oil and it causes a massive problem because it's actually very detrimental to their child because the terpenes are not working for them so and then they give up on it so what i've tried to focus on is creating plants that are very high in linalool very high in mercine you know so you can tailor the exact extractions that you want and then also you know depending on where people live that you can grow for yourself and create your own oils that you're not subjected to whatever's available on Amazon or, you know, whichever website and that you just got to buy what's available that you can actually grow and create your own medicine. Yeah. Well, that's mm. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's just yeah. great that somebody is actually focusing in on what terpenes, not just a uh, high THC or whatever that people, mm. you know, the parents need mm. to know that they need to look into the terpenes. So. Absolutely. And Another that's a, that's question. A, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's, a, that's one of the biggest issues, especially what I'm picking up with the like the American market. You know, there's so many states that are legal, yeah. whether it's recreational or medical. But then when I go to the dispensaries, the bud tenders or the, the people that are working in the shops, they don't even know what they are. They don't know what you the know, terpenes just, are. Okay. No, no they, and, and there's no labs. There's, a lot of them do have third-party lab testing, which gives you the breakdown of all your residuals, whether there's heavy metals or pesticides, or you know. And then they'll also give you the breakdown of the terpenes, which is so important when you when you're trying to work out what's going to work for your uh, treatment or not. And then when they go to the dispensary, the people just try and sell them all sorts of anything, very high THC, or and when they ask them, you know, can you please explain? I need to know about terpenes. They just look at them as if they're talking gibberish or they don't even understand what that is. And that's your people in the in the dispensaries who don't know what's going on. Yeah, well, it sounds like that the bud changing. tenders need a little bit more education. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it is changing. There's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of movement away from it because the the companies that are making these products, whether they're growing the raw flower, the plant itself, or they're extracting, 
they can customize exactly to what they want that product to do instead of just being a generic trying to make it apply to everybody you look some of it is okay it's not necessarily a bad thing um, a lot of people who don't really have that sort of problem as like a special needs child would it's okay generally but sometimes people will try an oil and it will keep them awake all night and they were expecting to go to sleep because it's a cannabis high thc and it's actually because it's full of phenine not yeah. full of phenol. Mm. Huh. So another question I have for you is, I've heard this term opposite responder. What is an opposite responder? This is where it gets really interesting. Um, like I said, you'll, you'll, you'll try and find a strain very high in phenol, which will be calming. Let's just say we're looking to do a calming and aggressive child. So you'd okay. look for a very high phenol, high mercine, bit of carophylline, and you try that with them and they would absolutely freak out and it would make them raging smashing up furniture you know totally out of control basically and normally you'll find that kind of person or child will be very high add adhd but you don't really know that 100 percent. you've got to draw a line somewhere and step over to try a specific thing and if that's the case, if you know that that oil or plant that you're using is very high in linalool or mercine, and this is the result, then you will see that that is an opposite. And then what you would have to do is then use a very high limonene or high pinene and low linalool, low mercine plant. And that would actually calm them tremendously. It's like as if it's two energies coming against each other kind of thing, the high energy of their brain and the high energy of the plant will then create this calmness. If you can, if you yeah. understand what that is, you understand that. Yeah, it's, I understand. It's, it's, it's like it's like you're giving them what you think is supposed to be the right terpene, but it's having the opposite effect. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They're totally okay. opposite to the norm. You know, that's a that's a very low. Percentage, right. It's it's but, a very percent, like whatever. Maybe yeah. let's just say five yeah. percent for yeah, two to five percent. You know, but that, yeah. but you don't know that until you've tried it. And generally, right. what you will find is if that's the kind of result that you get that that person also is a very high ADD levels you know they've got very high ADD and that's just yeah. and even it's not even necessarily a, a special needs uh, thing I've, I've come across clients who are just normal people you know it's not as if they've got special needs or they are disabled or whatever there's no issue with them and if they use a, a, a very sedating indica and if I you know if I supply them a, a very sedating indica they'll say I never slept a wink you know, I didn't have a single minute sleep. I was up all night. And then, you know, you know, so try the limonene yeah. or very high limonene. And it, it, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to pin that down. Though. Sometimes people don't really understand what's going on. It's also the fact, you know, what you've been eating, how much fat you've got in your diet, you know, because it's also a very um, important in absorption of your cannabinoids is the fat levels. You know, if, if especially uh, people who are on low fat or no fat diets, they don't absorb much of the stuff that they using like that so you need to be very aware it's not just the oil it's not just the plant it's also the nutrition that they're using the hormonal state of the body it's a holistic approach generally that you have to do you know to really pin it down nicely but like i say you have to step across the line you have to do one plant and then just see what happens and then you adapt it and then the other issue which becomes um not a problem but you've got to be aware of it is that you start developing tolerance yeah. You develop a tolerance to a specific plant. So you, then you need to find another plant that's very similar, but it's got different, it's just a different strain. Mm -hmm. So that once your tolerance builds up, you then swap out to a different plant. And that, you, that you've got a continuous overlap of cannabinoids going into the, into the client. You don't want that sort of drop-off, because if you have a drop-off of cannabinoids, then they revert back to behaviors which you don't want, like high aggression and damaging themselves they do what they call sibs which is self-induced behavior you know when they start hitting themselves yeah hitting their heads on the floor hitting their heads on the walls that kind of thing yeah so you need to have a, a, an awareness that it's not just one specific plant you need to have a two or three in your armory you know, and then be ready to swap them in, in and out what you can also do is combine plants so you'd have two plants in the same blend which would also help a lot you know? but they have to be very similar you couldn't have a yeah very high limonene with a high limonene all that have to be high limonene all high mercy and etc well it's it very sounds interesting. like it sounds like a lot of information for the parents to, to learn but i mean really when yeah. you break it down into the six terpenes 
And then just knowing about the opposite responders so that if they see something that they shouldn't be seeing with the plant that they're, you know, utilizing, they can adjust right. or talk to somebody like you or look at the nutrition. So I think right. your right. unique perspective of knowing the nutrition and knowing, you know, all of this information would really help the, mm. the ADHD parents, because I do see a lot of people just shopping online for something and they just, you know, they're trying to do the best they can. And they're in a difficult situation, of course. And um, yeah, so this is great information. I'm going to list the six terpenes in the description okay. below. And maybe right. we can just put just a little short little description of what they do, what you said here, just so people have it mm. quick and handy. I do um, have a nice, I do have a nice leafly, um, like a little picture with all the different terpenes. That are, and it gives you all the temperatures that when they're activated, because you can also change the way the plant reacts by the different activation of temperatures of your, when you're doing a uh, uh, decarb decarbing of the plant, when you, you need okay. to decarb the plant. So you can also change terpenes by the temperatures that you need to do. It's, it's, it's just, wow. it's very okay. adaptable. Yeah, so it's oh, very okay. adaptable. So if they so have an I, arsenal of like three things and something isn't yeah. reacting well and they have enough education to know that, then they can actually yeah. change the terpenes in the plant that they have. Yeah. It's also very interesting is how the plant gets cured. You know, when yeah. generally people, they cut the plant, they just hang it, they hang it in some room or whatever, and it just hangs yeah. it till it dries out and then they chop it all up and whatever they do with it. But you need to understand when you're curing the plant, which, which means that you take it and place it into a sealed container, which then allows the, um, the terpenes to develop. Okay. And you, need to, you need to let that container breathe every couple of days to release all the different... Um, whatever's coming off the plant as it's drying out within the container. That also makes a huge difference to the terpenes. And then also how you mill it, which is how you would actually grind the plant up into a fine. Some, some people don't grind it up at all. You know, they take it as a solid bud and then they will put that into oils and extract from that or into alcohol and extract like that. So there's many ways around improving terpenes or removing terpenes. There's also companies that add in terpenes. When you order an oil, you can add in extra linalool or extra myrcene, but that you really need to know what you're doing because it can become poisonous if you don't know what you're doing and cause very oh, adverse, wow. yeah, can cause adverse results. And you'll see there's, there's quite a few people in well-known companies that are offering terpene adding additions that uh, you really need to know what you're doing when you do that. But what I'll that, do is I'll-, I'll that is, Yeah, definitely provide that if you would. And that's a little yeah. bit of a scary thing that parents need to know about if they do find a company that's adding oh. in terpenes that they could be toxic if taken in too high of amounts, so. Well, well, the companies that supply that, they know what they do. Okay. okay. I, I don't want to mention brand names because I, I don't think that's the place to do it here, but this, this okay. is a very well-known company that makes very good oils and they know what they're doing. But what I'm, what I'm alluding to here is you'll find, you can go online and buy terpenes yourself. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of places that sell the terpenes in little tiny bottles that you can then add into your product. And they, they use it for many things. What you're finding now is you're getting uh, like beverages with added terpenes to be more calming. So they're adding linalool into beverages and et cetera. So, but if you don't know what you're doing and you put too much of, of that into your product, you're gonna, you know, as a, as a parent or if you think you're making a good product, you can actually make it poisonous. So it's not something I'd recommend to people unless they really know what they're doing and percentages wise, because it's really potent. They are really potent. They're unbelievably potent, to be honest. Um, my last question, which we might have already answered, mm -hmm. is why is linalool and pinene problematic for special needs autism patients? Like I said, it's a very stimulating uh, terpene. And the majority of the uh, autistic are boys. And boys are very aggressive once they start going into puberty. They don't understand puberty, majority of them. I'm talking about, you know, people who are not verbal, maybe even semi-verbal. Um, and they can become very destructive, very, very, very destructive. I mean, I know quite a lot of families that have had to sort of put in plexiglass windows and put plexiglass over the televisions and plexiglass on any glass surface that would have been glass because it just gets smashed. And they have like a, an escape room when yeah. if that child is really getting bad, that they can actually lock away the other siblings and you know the younger uh, ones who might get hurt because these 
these kids rage because they go into such a frustrated state. Now, the, unfortunately, the limonene and pinene triggers that. If that's what they're, they're not an opposite. If they're an opposite, obviously, that's not going to be the case. They will be calmed down. But you don't know that until you've tried it. You see, so yeah. that's the, that's an issue. As yeah. as good as limonene is, it's a very good terpene. I'm not saying it's a bad terpene. Like I said, it's earlier. It's, it's being very widely used specifically for breast cancer cells. Apoptosis. You do know what apoptosis is? No, I do not. Please tell me. Okay. Cell <laughs> apoptosis is when the cell uh, needs to die. And that's when the cell doesn't die is what it then starts to become a tumor. You know, when it keeps re oh, okay. replicating itself. So the cell apoptosis is that when the cell dies off, which is a natural thing. It's, that's the way we are as a, as, a, yeah. as a body. Our cells die off and replace themselves. It's just, just when it doesn't die off. And it starts replicating when it's got faulty messages coming into it, wherever it's coming from, whether it's a, you know, a biome problem or it's an external influence from pesticide or whatever, and it starts becoming a tumor. You want to create apoptosis, and uh, that's what cannabis does. That's how it, it stops tumors from growing. It cuts off the blood supply, and it causes cell death. So it's very good for that in breast cancer, specifically the luminine. You know, so it is, it, it's, it's got very good... Uh, applications too that you just can't give it to a special needs boy of 15 who's and generally they are huge they because their hormones are also you know everything's out of balance within that kind of body there's a lot of unbalanced things going on within an autism spectrum and they can become horrifically violent really bad I, the one client i was working with that um, was from texas She's had broken cheekbones, broken wrists, broken ribs, you know, from her boy. And she's just trying to help him, but he doesn't understand that. So he lashes out and beats her when she's trying to, you know, help him out. And those kind of things happen regularly if it's the wrong terpene. So that, that's specifically why limonene and uh, pinene is, is, is not really recommended initially. Rather start with a calming plant, you know, that you know is very yeah. high in mercy and then linalool. So if something does go you know, wrong in that, then you know, okay, I've only got to try one more thing. It's a limonene and pinene plant and it should work. But if you start with a limonene, pinene, and it's just, an, you know, it can become a really bad scenario. Yeah, I'm sorry. My dog really? is over here making noises. I'm not no, saying that at all. No. I mean, no, it's, okay. it's just so sad. And I know that there's a lot of um, special needs autism patients that are not as bad as this. And this sounds like the extreme cases and stuff, but it is mm. really so difficult for the parents to navigate this. So thank you for sharing this information. We'll put the information stuff in the description below. And hopefully that will help some parents to educate themselves so that they can help their children better and, and alleviate some of the suffering. So Clive, I would like to just give a takeaway or something for the parents who are dealing with these autistic children, giving them some hope. And um, do you have anything that we can kind of talk to talk about uh, as a takeaway for them? Well, mainly because uh, what you will find is that these people that have tried cannabis before, they heard about it or they saw, you know, like Charlotte's a story on CNN. I don't know if you're familiar with that story on CNN with I Charlotte, am, am, Charlotte yeah. Figgy. You know, they saw that and they, wow, it's going to help. And they do, you know, they, they go out and rush out and buy all these oils or whatever. And it's a disaster because they weren't aware that it's actually the terpenes. Mm -hmm. So then they turn their back on cannabis because they say, well, it's actually did nothing for my child. And they'll go back down that uh, unfortunate black hole of chemicals because that's all. That's the other options. And, you know, obviously, they work through diet and they work through all the other massages. There's all these different support programs. But if the endocannabinoid system is still lacking, um, you're not gonna, it's not going to improve. And cannabis does improve. It's, uh, the main thing is that if somebody's gone down that road and it's been a disaster for them, they must understand that it wasn't the plant that was wrong. It was the understanding of the plant and the wrong applications. And it makes all the difference if you understand the terpenes and how they work yeah so really applied knowledge is power so they just need absolutely. to have more knowledge and understand what's happening and then they'll be able to help their child better absolutely okay. yeah so thank absolutely. you so much clive for being here on grow heal inspire change i appreciate you so much thank you for having me and i hope you go, go from strength to strength on your amazing channel
And I hope that you come back and talk more about these issues. I Absolutely. mean, it's definitely very interesting. Like yeah. I said to you earlier, that I, I didn't ahead, want to I'm go sorry. too deep. <laughs> uh, like I said, I didn't want to go down too deep. It's a very deep rabbit hole. You could spend hours talking about it all. And it's really just trying to give a, a brief overview so people can get a slight, slightly better understanding and not keep thinking of sativas and indicas. They must think in the terms of terpenes. Yeah, totally agree. I agree. Okay. Think, in, think, Wonderful. Is, think in terpenes and all that will be in the description below. Thank you okay. so much. Wonderful. Okay, Thank bye. you, Tati. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>